How does working with Netflix compare to working with Disney? They're both awesome. <laughs> because, because I do want to keep working for, for <laughs> all companies. Um, they are yeah, all they, amazing. They are. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Charlie Cox. Hey guys. No big deal. Just There's a lot, a lot of people here. That's so cool. Hi. And, and a very friendly, incredible bunch too. Oh. How, how many Comic Cons do you think you've done over the years? Um, a few. <laughs> a few. I, you know, I guess, so I, my first one was when the show came out, like 2015. You know, probably 15 or 20, I guess. Yeah. I, I go clear I don't back. think I've been here before. Well, welcome. Let's that, hear yeah. it. I go clear back to the Stardust days as a huge, giant Neil Gaiman nerd. We're here for them, so let's get right out to their questions. Nice. We'll start right over here, oh, cool. and they'll Hi. bring up the lights. What's your name? I'm Jeff. Oh, Jeff. It's Jeff. So Jeff is amazing. Hey, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hi, amazing Jeff. Hello, Charlie. Uh, my question to you is, how is it like playing a blind person, a daredevil? Yeah, th uh, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a challenge for sure. Um, uh, it, you know, it took a lot of work to, to kind of get it down and make sure, I, you know, what I was doing was authentic and stuff. Um, you know, it's one of the, the, the coolest things about playing this character is, you know, the, as a byproduct, the relationship I've, the, I've um, built with the visually impaired community is really cool, you know, and it, I've, from coming to places like here where people tell me how important the portrayal is because, because of, um, you know, I play a superhero who, um, who uh, is visually impaired, has a physical disability, so that's, that's been amazing. So, yeah, thank you, Jeff. Great question. Thank you. This, I have to ask about this though. You, you took the role very seriously and you even did some training and I think you got assaulted as a result of that by some woman in the street. What, what happened there? <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so there was a, I was, work, when we first got, when I first got the job, I was working with this really uh, amazing gentleman called Joe Streche, who's um, visually impaired. And I was kind of, he was teaching me how to use a cane and how to do household chores and make a cup of tea and just, you know. But also I was filming him a lot because I was filming how he moved and how, what his eyes did and stuff. And I, oh, one day I was filming him walking down the street in New York because I wanted to see him navigate traffic and pedestrians and stuff. Um, and someone thought I was, I didn't know him and I was filming him for fun or something. And so she got really cross with me. <laughs> And, and, and Joe didn't hear, so Joe just kept going, and I was like, no, I'm, he's my friend. <laughs> Let's go to a question over here. Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name is Megan. Hi, um, Megan. I just want to thank you, Charlie, for being my childhood crush from Stardust. <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps still your crush? <laughs> yes. I mean, look at him. Because <laughs> we just watched it last night, and the entire time I was swooning. So That's thank so you. That's so cool. Thank um, you. I know a lot of people tend to ask questions about the production of the movie Stardust, but I want to ask what your favorite part of the story is. <laughs> um, I haven't seen it in a while. <laughs> um, Just from what you remember. Um, I think, I think probably the stuff with Captain Shakespeare. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I, there was it was just it's really fun. Um, I remember there was the, I think there's a scene where Claire Danes and and I are on a cloud having an argument and and they basically they got like a huge like bouncy castle but they didn't put enough air in it so you know if, you, if it's like deflated and you can't really and so we had to stand on it mm -hmm. and there was a rain machine <laughs> and we then had to like try and stand on this thing and say all the lines and be mad at each other 
um, and that's just a really good memory. It's just, mm. It was like a really fun and silly and all, the, all of that. It was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great Thanks, question. Megan. Thank you. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Catherine. Hi, Hi Catherine. Catherine. I have to second the... I have to second what she said. Thank, thank you for being my childhood crush from Stardust. <laughs> um, and I wanted to ask you, so N- Matt Murdock is now joining the MCU, Daredevil's joining the MCU. Which characters from Marvel, it can be from the comics, it can be from the MCU, which characters do you most want Matt Murdock to interact with? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 great question. I have to be really careful here because anything I say when it's reported <laughs> it's reported like it's the word of God <laughs> spoken you know and, I, and so I have to be careful you know look I, I love all those everything those guys have been doing um, and there's a few there's a few characters that I would love to have some interaction with um, a lot of them are, are obvious <laughs> Um, but who, I, I have no idea if they what those if they have any of those plans for me or not. But but I'm I'm in the door now at least. You know what I mean? Like I'm in the room. So <laughs> so that's pretty cool. What would Thank you, you choose? What would you choose? Hmm. You could be the word of God in this situation. <laughs> okay, okay. That's a good one. You get like five I seconds. Asked Spider-Man. I would like there's to see the- more Spider-Man. Yeah, be cool, right? Especially now that Peter Parker is like doesn't exist. I feel like he should have a lawyer to help him figure out some paperwork with being a non-existent <laughs> entity. I think he needs a lawyer. I Solid. Think, Solid. I think it would be cool if I was the lawyer for all three of them. <laughs> you know? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. What is the ta- what are the tattoos of on your arm? Oh, what? they're just Personal stuff. Personal stuff. <laughs> no my, my, my family, my children, and my wife, and things like that. That's awesome. Yeah. Question over here. What's your name? Hello, my name is Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hello. I was just wondering how you feel about Foggy and Karen being in the show now. Oh, it's so cool, man. So cool. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty heartbreaking when they weren't around initially. And, um, you know, when, when we came back to filming and they had made some changes, which you guys obviously have probably read about and stuff, you know, it was clear that Foggy and Karen are kind of the heartbeat of our show. It always were, and so it was really special to have them back. And yeah, huge shout out to both to Deborah and to Eldon. You know, so the, I, I know there's been photos. There were some set photos that came out, so I'm, I'm I know I can talk about it because it's on the internet. But it was it was really sweet to have some 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 start, some scenes together again. Thank you. Thank you. Question over here. What's your name? Hi, I'm Haley. Hi, Haley. Um, I wanted to ask, what was the most challenging moment that you were doing while playing Daredevil? Um, oh, wow. Um, I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> stuff that's physically challenging. You know, the, the, the fight scene, the fight scenes in general are, <laughs> they can be really long and cold. <laughs> On you know we, we typically we always used to shoot on a r- rooftops um, in winter you know and, and it was it would get really cold um, th- yeah I, th- I think of that prison fight scene in three was that was really hard it was like three three days of fighting and stuff um, yeah and I mean and then there's just a lot of there are a lot of scenes that when you read them Mm -hmm. you know that they feel iconic that the fans are going to really respond and so that you know I feel a bit of pressure when those scenes present themselves like I have scenes with with Vincent D'Onofrio and stuff and I just know that these are the kind of moments that the fans are going to love and so it's really important I I feel feel they feel more important than other scenes maybe you know so thanks though great question it's funny because you hear actors often talk about how you're shooting in, in one of two ways. You're either sweating to death or you're frozen. That's it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, never yeah. just pleasant, yeah, ever. Yeah. Question over here. Yeah. What's your name? Hi, I'm Anne. Hi. Hi. Uh, my question is, from a behind-the-scenes standpoint, how does working with Netflix compare to working with Disney? They're both awesome. <laughs> <laughs> because, because I do want to keep working for... for <laughs> All companies. Um, 
They are all amazing. Yeah. 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 I love it. Hi, yeah. what's your name? Hi, um, I'm Noah. Hi, Noah. Hi, Noah. Hi. Um, so obviously the MCU is very secretive, and Kevin Feige is always breathing down everyone's necks, trying to keep people quiet. Um, but is there someone in your life that you feel like you kind of just abandon that secrecy with, and just tell tell them everything the second you know it? And if you feel like that question is going to get you in trouble, then um, what is it like keeping that from um, keeping all the secrecy from everyone? That's a great question. Yeah, I also I, for, I I'm like I forget what people don't know. Oh God. You know, so I get really nervous. Um, even just like uh, people, uh, someone's a minute ago asking about Foggy and Karen, and I'm, I have to like think, do people know that? Is that? And then I'm like, oh yeah, they've photos, so okay. <laughs> um, so, I, I mean, I tell my wife everything. I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping she's trustworthy. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, it's more like I, I feel like sometimes I could be on the phone to someone in a in like an Uber, going so you know what I mean. And then I and then after I get out, I'm like, oh shit, I wonder if I should have spoken about that, you know. Um, I, I, some of you probably have read this. I've told this story before, but when we were doing Spider Man, um, you know, I, it was my involvement in that was super, super secret. And I was only needed for one day. So it was like very possible to keep me secret. But because it was, there was um, COVID at the time, I had to be in Atlanta. I had to quarantine for two weeks before I could shoot. And then I was done. Um, but I'm friends with Andrew Garfield. I've known Andrew for years. And so I texted him and said, you know, do you want to have some l lunch? And so neither of us really thought about it. We were like, yeah, let's go and get some lunch. And so I picked him up and we went somewhere. And then we got to this restaurant and, I, and both of us realized like, oh shit, we probably, sorry. <laughs> we probably shouldn't be photographed in Atlanta together whilst they're shooting Spider-Man. You know what I mean? That's not a good look. Um, and so we chose this table in this restaurant and had us both facing the wall. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, but I think we, we got away with it. Thank you so much. Thank Noah, you. No, I love that question. I'm going to use that in some future panels. What an interesting <laughs> thing. Um, out of curiosity, do you see? Do you do you have the the sense when people have recognized you, and what is that moment like when you just mind in your business having lunch? You're like, oh, I've been spotted, or how does that work for you? Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't notice it a lot, to be honest. Um, it, I'm norm, it, normally someone comes and says something and then and, and, and that's when I know they've recognized me um, occasionally like I'll be on a, the subway in New York and I'll see someone trying to figure it out oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fun <laughs> and there was one example where I was on the subway with this and there was like a bunch of high school kids like a bunch of them and I was a little that was like and uh, that would make me a little nervous because that was like a lot of people <laughs> it was like 15 of them and I, I could hear them talking. I, I mean, I don't know why they thought I couldn't hear it, but they, I could hear them. And like one of them was like, that's him. And I was like, no, it's not. And I was like, yeah, it is. And then they got their phone out and it's like, I can't get cell reception, like all this kind of stuff. And then, and then I, got, I got off and one of the guys got off. Not because of me, I think it was his stop. But they had decided it wasn't me. <laughs> And then, uh, and so I got off and then the door shut and I like, well, just waved it. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, uh, and then I could see them like all freak out inside. <laughs> and then the, the one guy got, he was, he was out. So he was like, can I have a photo? And so as they were leaving, I was taking a selfie. With his <laughs> <laughs> I felt kind of bad to be honest, but like, but it's not, like, it's not my place to go, by the way, you're right. Whoever said, you know, like I just, you know. Yeah. That is a great story. Hi, what's your name? Question over here. Hi, my name is Caitlin, um, and I saw you in a little production called Betrayal on Broadway with, with Tom Hiddleston and Zoe Ashton. You all were phenomenal. Thank you. My first question is, would you ever consider going back to Broadway, and if so, what show? And I would also want to know a little bit more about the infamous Halloween costume switcheroo between you and Tom Hiddleston. Okay, so first great easy, yes. Uh, I don't know what show, but I'd, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd love to. It's one of the reasons I live in outside New York is so that I can be close to the theater. Um, <clears throat> so when we did that Halloween thing, 
um, I was not, I was, Daredevil was done for me as far as I'm concerned. Like I hadn't, we, the show was over. Um, and I knew Tom was doing another, like, um, I knew, oh, I found a sweet. <laughs> Is that a starburst? Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I knew Tom was doing Loki again, but I, I was not, as far as I was aware, it was over, like Daredevil was over. Um, and I was just kind of, <laughs> I really needed that. If I ever am on stage with you again, I will bring Starburst. I really needed that. It's a good, that's, a, that's a good feeling. Um, so I was a little nervous because I didn't want to, I don't know, I didn't want it to seem like, I was trying to encourage Marvel, you know, to pick us up. But, so we called them, we called, we called Marvel and said, can we do this? And they sent us the costumes, I mean, the Halloween costumes. Yeah. And then Zowie decided to do it, and then Eddie did it as well. But what's cool about it is, it was me, Tom, and Zowie in these Marvel costumes. And now I, I am doing Devil again. And then Zowie went, was in Miss Marvel, I mean, it's so cool. Yeah. So it might have been your, you might have inspired bringing Daredevil back. Maybe. <laughs> Thank you, Caitlin. Hi, what's your name? Question over here. My name is Hannah. Hi, um, Hannah. The first uh, movie I saw you in was Theory of Everything. So what was it like working with the cast? Theory of Everything. Yeah, it was so, so that was such a fun film to shoot. It was so good. Cool. Again, Eddie had been my friend for years, and we never. I don't think. Oh, we worked together once, but we hadn't really had scenes together. Um, and uh, you know, like. It's like one of the joys of any job is when you get to work with, to collaborate with your friends. So, um, so we had a lot of fun on that. It was really sweet. It was, a, it was such a beautiful film and Eddie's performance and Felicity's as well. I mean, just really phenomenal. So I feel very proud to be, to be part of that. Um, it's also so, so different to Daredevil, you know, that character. So it was kind of fun. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Hannah. Thank you. So who, who are you close with um, in the actor sphere? Like, who do you pick up the phone and text or, or chat with? Well, Vincent's come, become, a, become one of my great friends, ironically, you know. We, like, we get on so well, <laughs> you know. Um, so it's kind of fun when we have to then be- pretend that we hate each other. <laughs> um, um, I mean, my best friends are not actors. You know, they're my, my school, my childhood friends, obviously. But, um, you know, I... I a lot of the Brits, we all know each other, you know, Eddie, I had, I, I had lunch with Jamie Dornan the other day for the first time in a number of years, and I think the last time I saw him, I didn't have kids, you know, so it was, it's kind of cool. Um, I, I, I've told this story a, few, a number of times, so sorry if I'm boring you. I, I do have a really cool photo of my, on Venice Beach in California. We were all in LA trying to get work, trying to get jobs. Um, and we're all in the beach on a Tuesday because we don't have work. <laughs> and it's, um, and we're all playing volleyball. And it's um, myself, Andrew Garfield, Eddie Redmayne, and Jamie Dornan. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's a great photo. Yeah. Is that like up on the wall, I hope, somewhere in your no, office? No, no, it's just in, on my computer. That's cool. Um, yeah, but, but it pops up every now and again. And I, and I see it and I think, wow, man, we've all been so lucky. Yeah. You know, we've, we've really kind of... But I remember what's cool about it is I remember when I was... Where, Back then, when we were trying to get work and, you know, worried, is this going to pan out? Because if, act, if you're trying to be an actor and it doesn't work out, you have to start again. Yeah. You, you can't really use that non-experience yeah. and take it into another field. You have to go and get a qualification and have a different career. So it's very unsettling as a, as a, as a, um, as a younger man, you know, trying to get work and just have it. It feels so, so much luck involved, you know, being in the right place in the right time. So it was, it was a nerve wracking experience. But I remember back then hearing stories about like, I think like um, Ewan McGregor and um, uh, Jude Law and, and um, uh, a bunch of those guys, someone else I'm forgetting, like similarly all lived together when they were young and trying to get work and they shared apartments and stuff and I remember knowing that and thinking god it'd be so cool if we we can figure you know we get work and stuff and so it's really amazing did you ever come close to giving up um I don't think so I I always had an I, there was always something possible yeah there was always I mean there were months without work you know and I waited tables and stuff and did all that stuff um but I don't, th- I, 
I, I don't think it ever went long enough for me to go like, oh, I really need to rethink this. Yeah. Well, we're certainly glad. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. the question over here. Hi, what's your name? Hello, my name's Dominic. Hey, Dominic. Uh, three questions. Nope. Oh, <laughs> no. One. Oh, it's one. Oh, oh. Sorry. All right. Um, you already answered the one about uh, Vincent, that he's real close to you. What did you dread most that you thought you would have to do to get into acting? I mean, what, how far did you think you would have to go? Like, what am I going to have to do to get in the door? What, an, what did you dread? Excellent. Single question. Excellent. Nothing sexual. <laughs> just, what? Just what? nothing sexual. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> what did you dread? Like, how hard is this going to be for me to get in the door? to get started you know what did you, what was your dread like man what am i gonna have to do to get this wow what job? a good question um it's 57 uh, this is a 57 year old brain thing in your so yeah i mean you got a good one on you just just auditioning is like i mean look everything's relative obviously did you think you were good enough oh uh, you just don't who know i mean you day to day it's uh, and to, to this day you know i wake up some days and think yeah i'm pretty good at this and other days i wake up and i'm like oh my god this is awful <laughs> you know, that is, I think that is the nature of being involved in any, some sort of art, which it fluctuates, you know. And, and I, you know, I remember reading years ago an article, an interview with, um, with um, oh God, Christopher Walken, who's like one of my heroes, and him saying that he, he, he still to this day feels like he's, his, the last job was, the, his job he just finished was the last job. one, you know. Um, so... I think you have to get pretty comfortable with feeling insecure about stuff. Um, that they're going to be let down. Let down, but, uh, but also that you'll, you know, that you'll, it's just, it just does feel to me at least that there's a lot of luck involved. You know, being in the right place at the right time is, cool. is, is has certainly been a theme for my career. And you, um, you have to just chalk that up as, as, you know, good luck and work hard, obviously. And, you know, all, all the rest of it, make sure you're prepared and stuff. Awesome. But um, in terms of, I mean, just, I still dread auditions. If I have to audition for something, I still, I, like, I, I can't sleep. I, don't, I hate getting nervous and stuff. I mean, if any of, any of you guys out there have done anything like that, a casting call or an audition, it's like, it it's really, it's hard, you know. Well, thank, thank you, Vincent. Answer. I appreciate it. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Can you do a Christopher Walken impersonation? I can't, no, okay, I you can't, knew I was no. like, I gotta ask. I love it when people can. When but they're good at it, they're yeah, really good. Bradley Cooper's one is really. Is yep, it Bradley Cooper's? It is. is so good. Yep, man. yep yeah. absolutely. Hi, question over here. What's your name? Josh. Hey, Hi, Josh. Josh. I was just wondering, my, one of my all time favorite scenes of the Daredevil series was the hallway fight scene from season one. I'm yeah. just like, oh. Uh. Let's hear it. That's right. How many days did that take you to film? I, that was that was just that was one day. One day? Yeah, because it's a one, so it was all, it was one day. But they, I mean, obviously, the stunt the stunt team were rehearsing it with the camera department for you know a, a couple of days leading up to it. But it was just a one day shoot. Yeah, That's and and that was very early on. It was like in the second week of production. So I, at that point, I still was I wasn't I hadn't learned many of the stunts at that point. So I was like I was a. Uh, I didn't. I was not involved in that one as much as I was in others. You know, that was mostly Chris. That's very cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, Thanks, it's a Josh. Cool scene. See, we have all kinds of good questions yeah. here. I love this crowd. Hi, what's your name? Hi, uh, I'm Evan. Uh, so, Hi, Evan. Uh, first, uh, up until a few months ago, I worked for the American Bar Association Commission on Disability Rights. So basically, disabled wow. lawyers were our thing. So that's your so poster cool. Was up on the wall of my office as kind of our unofficial mascot for seven mm, years. So wicked. On behalf of disabled lawyers, thank you. Thank you. Um, so maybe this isn't the kind of thing that you think about at all, but I know one thing that I've always found really fascinating about the Daredevil character is he's both actively really disabled, though he can't see, but also uh, basically a superhero. He has abilities that make him exceptional in another direction. And for a lot of us in the disability community, that's a very familiar thing where we're sort of, you know, exceptional in both strengths and weaknesses. So I'm wondering, is that something that you ever tried to reconcile with how you played the character? Like it's something you thought about, or if you did think about it, you know, how did that affect the way you played it? Yeah, it's a really great question. Um, so there's a lovely quote, I, I don't know who said it first, but there's a, there's a lovely quote, which is the wound is the gift. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but the idea behind the things that hurt you end up being the things that, that make you stronger and make, you know, um, end up, um, uh, leading you or guiding you into the person you're supposed to be, I guess, or something like that. Um, 
And I think the Matt Murdock is a really good example of that. You know, the wound end up, ends up being the gift for him um, in a very literal sense. And obviously, for, for most of us, it's, it's um, more metaphorical, but, but with him, it's, it's literal. Um, so, but I just think it's a really great idea, concept to consider when thinking about Matt, that, that not just, it's not just literally what happened to him, but also it's how he lives his life. I think he sees, he sees problems as opportunities, you know, and he sees setbacks as redirections, maybe, maybe guidance from, from God or whatever. Um, and, uh, I've also found that to be really useful in my own life when I think when I can think that way, you know, um, um, you know, you can, you know, count, count your blessings rather than live in the disasters or, or whatever it is, you know, that's a, it's a, a vital part of life. It was Evan, right? Yes. It Thank did. you. Great question. Thank you. The line that he said, I'm still ruminating on it, when he said exceptional in both strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Thank you very much for your yeah. question. Well, thanks, Evan. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Isabel. Hi, Hi Isabel. Isabel. <laughs> um, I admire you so much as an actor, and I Thank like, you. Daredevil's my favorite character. Um, I was wondering, how do you think um, Matt Murdock is reflective of you and how you influenced his character? What is he? What what am am I? What do we have in common? Yeah. Do you mean? Yeah. So I'm not sure if this is going to answer your question, but this is what I'm thinking of. One thing I love one thing I love about playing Matt Murdock is he's so unafraid to 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 be completely honest with people. Like he doesn't people please at all, <laughs> which is not like me. <laughs> I'm a total people pleaser. Like really like can't you know like don't want to hurt anyone's feelings ever whereas whereas Matt has gotten and I admire this about him like he he tells people the truth he tells them exactly how he feels and um, and he's not afraid of them not liking it what he has to say um, and that's that's something that we have that's very different but it means that when I'm when I'm acting him, if I've, I get to enjoy that, you know, I get to enjoy what it would feel like to be someone who, and I don't mean it in an offensive way, but like, but I, I do think that is, it's really amazing to be around someone when they are that honest, that rigorously honest and don't, and let you handle your feelings around, around what they say. Um, so that's really fun to, to do that. Um, other, I do, other ways that, we're similar. Um, I, th um, I think we're, I, we're, I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite a positive person, I think, in general. You know, I tend to kind of really enjoy life. <laughs> and I think Matt does as well. I mean, he's burdened, obviously. I mean, carries a, you know, rocks with him everywhere he goes, and, you know, but, but, um, but has a positive outlook, you know, and believes things will unfold into goodness. Um, and I think I'm like that. Thank you. Thanks. Nice Thank question. You. Hi, what's your name? Hi, Hi. I'm Mockery. Uh, I'm a big fan of the comics. I love collecting comics. I was wondering if there's any Daredevil comics that you have read that you really enjoy and like would like to see adapted or just like inspired you on how you played uh, 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 Matt Murdock. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> Yeah, great. I mean, so many, um, so many. Um, you know, I, I reference the the um, Bendis Milieve stuff all the yes. time. That was that was the stuff that really got me to understand the show we were making when I read that stuff. Um, uh, you know, we have Jeff Loeb is here today, um, and uh, the stuff he did with Tim Sale, the Daredevil Yellow. I just think um, I, I think about that all the time when I have scenes with with Deborah. Um, Karen Page, because um, I think that that it captured the essence of their relationship so beautifully. Um, um, I really like the the in terms of. I think I, I get a bit confused because it's you know <laughs> yeah. been a while, but like I think in the there's a there's a period of the in the Brubaker Lark stuff where I think, I think what happens is Matt gets, him, gets himself arrested so that he goes to jail so that he can get to Fisk. Something like that. I can't remember exactly what the storyline, but I remember that period where he's, they're both in jail. 
Um, and I, I just always thought that would be a really cool storyline to, to mess with, you know. Um, thank you. Great question, Mercury. Appreciate you. Brian Michael Bendis is uh, from my hometown of Oregon, and he is someone I, of Portland. I would absolutely stop him on a subway and be like, let's have a photo, please. That'd be yeah, so yeah, cool. Yeah. He's, a, he's a hero, right? He yeah, is a hero. Yeah, yeah. And, I, so I, and I know Alex Maleev really well. So yeah, cool. so he, I see him a lot at my gym, actually. And, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Peter. Hi, Peter. Um, me and my siblings and girlfriend like uh, watching Daredevil a lot, and there's a lot of scenes where, like, uh, Matt's at the church and has conversations with different people about his faith. And I was just wondering, like, did you have to learn, like, any, like, theology or any, like, background on that before preparing, like, g- going into the role, preparing for the role? Well, I grew up a Catholic, um, and I'm not a very good one anymore. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, you know, that, that, that has obviously influenced a lot of my life, you know, and, I'm, and I've, I've always been quite moved by a lot of things that have come from, from my religion, um, in, including things like, you know, the, uh, the, the spaces themselves, churches and cathedrals and stuff, very um, um, architecturally at least, and, and et cetera, can, are very moving. So that, that stuff was all kind of, I had it, you know, I knew all the prayers, you know, I knew a lot of the etiquette, you know, um, and I'd, I'd, be, I'd done a ton of confessionals in my life and stuff like that. So kind of, that wasn't, and it, that stuff was quite familiar to me, um, and it was it was it was nice that with the, when I was preparing for this role, there were so many things about Matt that that I had no idea about. Like I didn't know anything about the law. I'm not American. I'd never done any martial arts. Um, I'm not visually impaired. You know, I mean, there were so many things I had to like. Right, I better work on that. <laughs> um, but at least the Catholicism was like, okay, okay, I got that. That I understand, you know. <laughs> um, so, but, um, uh, but it's, you know, fun, it's fun to, I've, I don't think I've, oh no, I have, I played a priest once. I played a priest twice. <laughs> wow, maybe there's something very pious about me. <laughs> Just realize that, you know. I've played, I've played a, quite a few, um, I think I've played a priest three times actually. <laughs> Well, wow, I'm just putting this together right now. Maybe Do you want I'm, me to look it up? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I think maybe someone's trying to send, send me a message. Maybe it's God. <laughs> He's like, dude. <laughs> uh, that's cool. All right, thank you. Thank you. And for Isabel, I think you can add that to the list when they were trying to decide what characteristics maybe you shared. Because I can, growing up also Catholic myself and, and no longer practicing, I can still smell Christmas and Easter. Um, the frankincense and myrrh, right? It's an immediate reaction. Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name is Tony Ann. Hi, Tony Ann. Um, I was wondering, since there have been other people that have played Matt Murdock in Daredevil, is there something that you wanted to bring to the character to make yourself like distinct, like this is Charlie Cox's Matt Murdock? No, I don't, I don't, really, th- I don't really think <laughs> that way. I, I, like, I didn't look at it and go, right, how do I make this different? Mm-hmm. I, I just wanted it to be authentic. Mm-hmm. I rem- when I started reading the comics, it was really clear to me that Matt Murdock is very different depending on which decade you're reading and right. what and what who's writing him. Right. Um, you know, you could you could make the argument that that there's a daredevil that was more Stan Lee, mm-hmm. which is very different to Joe Casada, which is very who obviously drew him, but it's very different to Brian Michael Bendis, you know, um, and Frank Miller, obviously. So I read the scripts and I dived into the comics and I kind of figured out quite quickly which which Daredevil we were going for the th- mm-hmm. I remember thinking like this concept of the man without fear right. was an interesting one because it's such an iconic phrase and notion but I also I, I was nervous to play someone who doesn't feel fear mm-hmm. because I just don't think that's interesting and what I like about Matt Mur- Murdock is he's so human. He's, he, you know, unlike many superheroes, he is, um, you know, he's not invincible. He, could, mm. he, can, he, he can be hurt quite badly, quite easily. And mm. the show really leaned into that a lot. So, um, so I just, I wanted to play someone who felt, who did, the man who had a lot of fear, but he was willing and able to, to fight, punch through it, you know, right. and, and face the fear. It's like he does it both simultaneously. Yeah. He has so he, fear, but he doesn't. Yeah, so it's almost like society labels him as the man without fear because they see what he does mm-hmm. and go, wow, he's fearless. But the truth is, he's not. 
he just he's just incredibly courageous and despite the fear will do it anyway right um which i thought was i think i just feel like is more is more human you know definitely great question thank, thank you, you. Yeah, thank you. hi what's your name mark hey mark hi <laughs> yeah my question is so i just got finished watching the defender series and matt's relationship with electra is really rocky especially at the end whenever she really rocky yeah, yeah. really rocky uh <laughs> So how do you feel about the differences between Matt and Electra and Matt and Jen? And, and who? She, and, and Jennifer. And Gen- Jennifer oh, Jen Walters. Walters? Yes, and, she, and She-Hulk. Because they kind of had a new situation going. <laughs> I'm just, I just, I was just saying it, I'm just thinking, wow, Matt picks them, doesn't he? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's some co- complicated characters in that. Um, like, do you feel like because Jen is un- more understanding of his his lawyer and then his superhero life versus Electra just being in that dark place with him all the time? How do you feel about that? Did you know that's what I was looking for? I've done it once or twice. Okay, really, really good question. Tough. Um, I, what I really liked about how they wrote the in in our show. What they wrote, how they wrote the the Matt and Electra stuff, was it really? It, I just felt it really encapsulated, like your college crazy girlfriend, right. <laughs> and that you that even though you even when you get older and you look back on that time and you're like, wow, that was nuts. When they show up, there's still a part of you that's like, let's do it again. <laughs> you know, there's <laughs> still that kind of like addiction to that the craziness. Um, just me, no one else. <laughs> so, so, and I thought the writers of season two, Daredevil, just, just nailed it with that. Um, uh, Marco Ramirez and Doug Petrie. So, the Jen Walter stuff is kind of like we didn't, we haven't really got a chance to explore it much. Maybe, hopefully, maybe one day we'll get a, a, an opportunity to do more stuff together because I absolutely loved working with Tatiana. She was, she's an incredible actor. Um, um, but that felt like that just felt like a I don't know like an a, a fling outside of your zip code is that what you guys is that how you say it you know you know what no. I mean <laughs> it, 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 I felt like it, when I was thinking about doing that show I was like wondering like well Matt typically is more like he's more heavy and like burdened and and like doesn't really go on vacation you know what I mean he's not that guy but I was thinking it's like kind of one of those things where he's in New York, he's in the grind, it's, an, it's like he's trying to like solve crime by himself, but then he has to go to LA and while he's in LA, he's like, oh, this is fun, you know, <laughs> you know? and he kind of just like has a good time. So that's, that's how I saw it. But you know, you, you know, we did the walk of shame, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. It's so funny, it really divides people because some people loved it and thought it was really funny and very daredevil and very um, uh, enjoyable. And other people get really cross about it, you know? It's, it's really funny, yeah. It's polarizing. Yeah. We have time for one, maybe two more questions. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Jacob. Hi, Hi Jacob. Jacob. Um, so out of um, the many costumes that uh, Daredevil has worn from the Black Ninja suit in season one to the classic red armored suit, or just throwing Jessica Jones' scarf on your face and the Defenders, um, what has been your favorite suit and uh, why? When I need to pee. <laughs> <laughs> the vigilante costume is so fun. <laughs> and easy um, so there was a lot of season three where I was wearing the vigilante costume and Wilson Bethel who's here today who plays Poindexter where he was wearing the daredevil costume and it felt so good to be <laughs> not wearing that and getting to see someone else like eh, 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 you know, <laughs> uh, you know. Um, so but you know, I ha- you can't escape the fact that when I when I get into my room in the morning or whatever, and the 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 superhero suit is hanging on the thing there, it's like you know I'm still still I'm still a little kid inside. You know, I'm like I look at it, I'm like cool. That's awesome. You know, so um, it's pretty fun. And you know, I, I, I again I know I can say this because there's f- footage all over the internet now, but the the new one's pretty cool. 
<laughs> I like it. You will be our last question. Hi. Hi. My name's Electro. How's it going? Hi, Electro. I understand that Daredevil was a man without fear. My question for you is, uh, do you think Daredevil would be a good member of the Green Lantern Corps? Mm. Oh, man. Do you, I, I'd love for you to ask another question because I don't know anything about Green Lantern. I'm, re- I'm so sorry. My, my, my superhero knowledge really just extends to Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> In that case, which music do you like to enjoy to listen to? Oh, oh that's that. a great question. <laughs> Nicely done. That's a great. Which, what music do I like, or what music does Matt like? It's very oh. different. <laughs> Either one works. Um, oh God. Okay. So um, I'm a big fan of the National myself, and you know, yeah, <laughs> love the National. Um, and I, I always think that Matt likes listening to like. I mean, I think he likes classical music when he needs to lower his adrenaline and <laughs> adrenaline levels and calm down but I think I, I always think of him as listening to like Interpol or Joy Division that kind of stuff mm. for some reason I don't really know why and then a little bit of you know a little bit of Spice Girls yeah <laughs> that's what's up right that's you, what's up do you know what I mean yeah. tell me what you want he, he, he puts that on in the morning <laughs> in the shower a little Spice Girls my yeah. question for you and this is where we'll, we'll end things is do you have the red glasses so, so, okay, so th- when we were doing one of the seasons, um, I went to, there was an auction at the American Foundation for the Blind, and they asked me if I could donate anything, and I went to production, and I said, can we, can we donate something? And they gave me a set of the red glasses that I had worn in the show. So I donated them to, for the auction. So me and my wife showed up at this event, and... There was all these things had been donated and everyone was mingling and having cocktails and putting, you know, you know, there was like a trip on a yacht or a dinner with someone or like a, two nights in this hotel, that kind of stuff, right? And one of the lots was the red glasses from Daredevil and there was a pit and I'd had them framed and like I had donated that for, to raise money. When, we, when everyone went to dinner, so the auction closed, dinner was at 8.30 the auction started at 7.30, dinner was at 8.30, and the, but the auction closed at 9.30 during when, when it was like dessert. And I, when I went, when we went into dinner, the price for the glasses was like 200 bucks. And I was like, what? They're, 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 it's the, the Daredevil glasses, are you kidding me? So, <laughs> so when, when it got to dessert, I went to the toilet and I went back in to see where it's at, and it was at 300 bucks. So I bid 500 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so at the end of the night, they called out the winners of, they were like, uh, they, I won my own glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was funny, because I went, to, when I was like, went to pay, the woman didn't comp- figure out what was going on. She knew that I had donated them, and she was like, oh, it's okay, you don't have to give them to us now. We'll, we'll package them and send them. And I'm like, no, I'm here to pay for them. She was like, no, 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 you don't have to pay for them. I was, and I was like, no, 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 you don't understand. I, I, I won them. <laughs> and they're already at my house, so we don't have to package them to anyone. <laughs> you know? So Let's, yes, I do have a set of the glasses. I am glad you're here. Let's take a selfie, please, if we could. All right, solid. Give it up, everyone, for Mr. Charlie Cox! I go where I want to go, and I watch what I want to watch, which is Fandom Spotlight. You should watch more. Have fun and follow your fandom, bub.